Welcome to Math for Game Developers. Let's say we have a monster, and when you shoot him, he gets angry. And he starts growing. And I'm gonna draw on this graph right here, uh, his size. He starts at size zero, and he'll stop growing at size S1. Sorry, he stops at size S0, and he'll stop growing at size S1. And so you can see that right here at, uh, at this time right here, this is time on the x-axis, you shoot him and he's gonna immediately start growing at a constant rate until he's the size that you need him to be. And so this is a linear interpolation between two sizes and we've um, done a lot of linear interpolation. We did the remap function and the approach function. And I'm, I actually think we haven't done just the regular closed form of linear interpolation, which is a shame. So here it is. This is a function of t that describes the, the state of the object between here and here when you know, between time equals zero and time equals one, that will get the monster from size S naught to size S1. So that's good, except the problem is we have these two inflection points where the monster is either not growing and then suddenly growing at full speed, or the monster is growing and then slam, not growing anymore. And that can kind of look a little bit jerky. And when you're polishing your game and you want it to look really nice, you want to remove all of these parts that are that have uh, abrupt trans transitions like that. So what do we want instead? We want him at first to be not growing, but then to kind of accelerate and then be growing at full speed and then slow down. And so we're going to ease in and out of the growth function, just like this. And that will get rid of those jerky moments. So how will we do that? We need to find a function that will be our new interpolation function. And it just so happens that cubic functions look exactly like this in their middles. Here's a cubic polynomial function right here. And you can see that if you just cut out the middle part, it does look exactly like we want it to look. It starts uh, flat, and then it goes up like this, and then it starts and it ends flat again. So we just have to find the right cubic function that has these properties that we want. So what are the properties that we want? So first of all, at time equals zero, this, this is your t-axis right here, and here's 0, and here's 1. And we're trying to find a cubic function h of t that satisfies some properties. At time equals 0, the function should be 0. So at time equals 0, the function should be 0. At time equals 1, the function should still be 0. Should be, oh, I'm sorry, it should be 1. So at time equals 1, the function should have a value of 1. 1. Okay. And now we're also concerned about the derivative of the function because that is the slope of the function. Recall that the derivative is the slope. And we want the derivative at 0 to be flat. We want the derivative at 0 to be 0. And we also want the derivative at 1 to be flat. And that will get us the easing, the easing in and out. Okay, it should be flat here, and it should be flat here, and flat means the derivative should be zero. So let's see what our function looks like. Since this function h of t is a cubic function, it will be a third degree polynomial Okay, it should have a t raised to the third power. 
And then it might have a bunch of other stuff too, but we don't know what the coefficients out front are gonna be yet. That's what we have to find. Okay, so this is a third degree polynomial. We just have to find what coefficients that we put in here. What are the C's gonna be that make the function look like this blue function right here that we want? So let's do it. Let's just plug in, all right, H of zero. And we know, so h of zero, if we plug in zero for t, we're gonna get c3 times zero cubed plus c2 times zero squared plus c1 times zero plus c naught. And that should be equal to, we already decided that should be equal to zero. Well, all of these terms go away, meaning that the only thing left is c0, c naught, is equal to zero. So we've made some progress. So let's continue. We know that, uh, uh, well, next I'm gonna actually look at h prime of zero equals zero, because that's gonna be the next easiest one to do. And in order to do that, we have to know what the derivative of h is gonna be. So if you watched my video on derivatives, you know, we can apply the power rule here. I'm just gonna squeeze it over here on the left, on the right. We apply the power rule and we get something like this. If you're not familiar with the power rule or with derivatives, uh, I have some videos that cover that and also Khan Academy has some great videos that cover it as well. So, now when we plug in h prime at zero, we're gonna substitute into this formula instead. So we're gonna get three c3 times zero squared plus two c2 times zero plus c1, and these go away, and we know that this whole thing should be equal to zero. So we've learned that c1 has to be equal to zero as well. So now let's do this same thing for h of one. We're gonna substitute in here, c3 times one cubed plus c2 times one squared. And then we know that c1 and c naught are zero, so we can just ignore them. And we've decided that this should be equal to one. And now we're gonna do h prime of one. This doesn't let us eliminate a, a coefficient immediately, but uh, that's fine. We can just continue. We do h prime of one, and we use this formula over here, so we get three c cubed times one squared plus two c two times one, and we've decided that should be equal to zero. So now if you look, we have a system of equation, of equations with two variables. And if we put that in a matrix, then we can solve for these coefficients. It's just a simple linear system, the sort of thing that, um, that you learn how to solve in like pre-calculus or linear algebra. So if you don't know how to, you don't have to know how to do that to follow. You can just believe me when I say that the solution is this. But if you want to know how to do it, some links to the Khan Academy videos that describe it will be in the description. I strongly suggest that you do go check that out because it's a very useful skill to have. So now we know what C3 and C2 are. So we can have our cubic interpolation function, interpolation function, H of T is negative two t cubed plus three t squared. That is the function that will give us this nice smooth transition between zero and one that we can apply to any transition that we have to make it a little bit smoother. And so let's go to the code section to see that at work. So here we are in the code section and we're doing a loop over all characters. And at each point, for each character, we're gonna create an interpolation value, which is a number between zero and one that depends on how long it's been since the character got shot. 
zero corresponding to I just got shot and I've started growing, and one corresponding to two seconds have passed and I should finish growing. Okay, and we're using our remap function uh, that I talked about in a previous video to do that. Uh, and then we're going to use that as an interpolator to decide how big we want to grow. We start at two, um, I don't know, what is the size? Two, two meters in radius, I guess. And then we end up at five. But I'm going to, between those steps, I'm going to apply cubic interpolation to smooth the transition so that I don't jerk to being growing at a high speed all of the sudden. So here's where the cubic interpolation function is defined. Let's go ahead and write it. Okay, so we're going to say negative 2 times t cubed. I'm just going to write t times t times t for t cubed. And then we're going to add 3 times t squared. And that's it. So we've written a very simple cubic interpolation function that does um, a smoothing instead of a jerky transition. It's still an interpolation, but it's no longer linear. It's now cubic. All right. So let's run it and see the difference. Gonna go ahead and shoot some stuff. And you can see there's no snap anymore when something starts growing. So there you go, there you have it. You can use any kind of interpolation function you like. Cubic is just one of them, linear is one of them but you can do a bunch of interesting stuff and you can make interesting transitions between one state and another um, in games or in websites or in shaders or wherever you like. So being able to think about interpolation is very powerful. Uh, so not quite sure what we're going to do next week, but that closes this video. Thanks very much.